today we will uh, talk about the smart systems and its applications and also one of the critical applications in the area of structural health monitoring. This is the lecture 6 of the micro and smart system course. So, in the lecture 2 we said that we talked about the smart materials, the principles of operations of various smart materials and today we will see the ranges of applications that these smart materials and systems can do in the area of aeronautics, civil, mechanical engineering, automobile, biomedical, etc. In this very chart I brought up in the lecture 2 to see what kind of applications we can realize with smart systems and today we will go back again and then review what are the applications in various sectors that we can achieve in the smart systems. In the aerospace we have it in the area of health monitoring, vibration control and shape control. In the and the major benefits is we can detect the damage, increase the life of the structures, life management and also fuel savings. In the area of defense we require for shape control, vibration control, health monitoring again and the benefit is firing accuracy of the weapons, fuel savings in rockets and missiles, in submarines, life cycle management etc. In automotive yeah, the major focus is the comfort, so we require reduced noise, vibrations and also to assess the health of the structure and the major benefit is passenger comfort, engine life cycle management, damage detection etc. In the area of industrial engineering we require smart applications for vibration control and noise control and major benefit is to reduce the machine noise, machine chatter and uh, also the operation comfort of heavy machinery, air conditioning and uh, ventilation noise reduction etc. In the area of medicals we require for health monitoring and shape control and some of the benefits is early warning systems for many diseases, surgical, micro robo, surgical tools etc. In the area of civil we require again for vibration and uh, health monitoring and basically is increase the life of the bridges which are very old in our country, earthquake protection and also uh, in the area of detecting damages. So, we will now review each one of these in more details in the area of aerospace and defense. So, in the area of aerospace we require smart systems for various applications such as cabin noise reduction which is here. the cabin noise reduction which is here, the, the automated flap positioning which is required for uh, changing the control, changing the flow of the uh, f the flow of the air or the fluid in order to uh, increase the lift. We have to have a variable wing geometry again for the same reasons. We need vibration damping to reduce damping levels. Uh, in the aircraft we require engine monitoring because engine monitoring is very cru crucial to see that if any dear damages or anything happens to the engine it is the early warning system can be triggered. We need to detect the impact that is going to be there. So, there are sensors to actually do that. The flutter, flutter is one of the important areas in the area of aerospace. The flutter causes stall reduce lift. So, this has to be avoided at any cost and smart material systems can actually help do this. Where are these locations, uh, the, where are these smart devices located in an aircraft? Here is a view graph that shows that. For example, we, we, re, we position the vibration damping devices in the engines which is shown here. We have the engine monitoring unit that is uh, present here and even in the engine itself which is shown here has very complex system which has compressor blades, turbine blades and various other accessories bearing housing systems. So, we position the wireless MEMS sensing especially in the area in the compressor blades. We also have a conformal antenna, we have uh, other uh, for the combustion processes we need some of the systems. So, you can see how complex the system is and the number of sensors to actually monitor is enormous. 
So, the, app, the ranges of applications that are required for aerospace is tremendous. So, let us move into the area of defense and one of the areas where we need uh, smart systems is in the actually maneuvering of the missiles. Here is an example of a smart fin. You could see that in order to get required maneuver, we rotate the fin. But the basic idea here is uh, if you have a smart fin, basically the smart materials can wrap to your appropriate shape in order to get the required maneuver. So, smart fin is extensively used in missile applications. Another area where the smart materials are extremely used in the stealth technology, especially if you use in a submarine. Here is an example here. We actually coat the ship hull with a piece of film. So, the stealth is basically in order to suppress the signature that is coming, electromagnetic signature so that it cannot be detected. So, basically there is an incoming wave and that needs to be either suppressed or changed in phase, the piezo can do it and here is an example where we can actually use uh, piezo films in order to uh, in, the, in the area of st uh, stealth technology. Another area is in the area of boundary control especially to see the maneuver on and the flow of the submarine in the underwater structure for which we have a smart tile. And the smart tile if you see the exploded view here basically has a pressure sensor which is uh, going to sense the pressure and move around. There is a velocity sensor to actually well, uh, they gauge the uh, movement of the both the submarine as well as the incoming vehicle, the enemy vehicle. And if the need be there is a piezo actuator that will actuate in order to stabilize the control. So, this is one area where uh, uh, in the area of submarines and underwater structures smart material system is very useful. Another area where we actually use in the area of telescope. So, the telescope basically has a mirror and uh, uh, now, we design an adaptive mirror in order to get a very high resolution uh, image. So, what, what is done here is there is a wave front sensor which actually senses if is the mirror oriented properly or not in order to get a high resolution image and there is a control system that is triggered. If the wave front, if the wave front sensor senses that the, the wavelength is not going to yield a very high resolution images, then the control system is triggered so that the mirror is oriented in such a way that a high resolution image can be got. Another area where we require uh, smart material is perfect projection of the projectile using a smart barrel. So, here there is a smart barrel and the smartness or the adaptiveness is uh, 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 is uh, related to the adaptive collar that is placed at the bottom of the barrel. This adaptive collar has two sensors which actually senses the position of the, of the barrel with respect to the target and if the target is ok or if the target is going to be off, a actuator is triggered from the, from the, from the control and uh, uh, and the, uh, and the projectile is fired. So, basically this is an adaptive, uh, adaptive uh, smart barrel where the smart system is used. Next we will look at the in the area of automotive and industrial sector. As I said earlier, the major focus here is the passenger comfort by reducing vibration and also to monitor the health and in the industrial uh, the smart systems are extensively used in the machine tool chatter control, in the air conditioning and ventilation noise control and in the mining machinery especially in the area of vibration control. And here is a slide that has been uh, downloaded from the internet or from the Fiat website and this is a typical car with the, with the range of smart systems uh, that is instrumented in today's car. For example, the most important is the climate control and the climate control basically is basically uh, uh, has a temperature sensors which basically senses the temperature and controls the temperature the specified temperature inside the car for passenger comfort. 
The mirrors, mirrors are automatically activated using an SMA technology. Basically, SMA wire basically positions the mirror perfect to the, uh, the passenger, uh, the driver's seat position. There is active vibration and noise control where the piezos, MR fluid and even nano composites are used as the basic actuators to control the vibration and noise. The aerodynamics or the flow over the uh, car is controlled using shape memory composites. There are latches which are smart, which are actuated by SMA. There are adaptive dampers for reduced vibration and control typically made from MR fluids. There are interior panels uh, which are uh, made smart using nano composites. The dashboard actuators are there and which are basically SMA or piezo, or piezo based. The structural parts are there where they basically it is made from nano composites. And there is a multifunctional bumper which basically senses the the basically senses the approaching target or the impact that is that a car a car is going to experience and that is basically made of piezo or nano composites there is a battery cutoff if the battery is uh, uh, has to be cut off then the actuator that is triggered is based on sma there is a fuel tank indicator that is based on sma and piezos so there is a range of uh, uh, smart sensors that today's car is instrumented for passenger comfort. Another major uh, uh, sensors that is used is gas sensor in order to control the emission. With the climate change being more predominant in today's car manufacturing, uh, so it is necessary to monitor the gas emissions from these cars and gas sensors are extensively used which are basically piezo based or nano composite based. Other areas where the smart systems are used is in the smart shock absorber. If you look at it, the shock absorbers, you have the typical view, uh, schematic of a shock absorber is shown here, which has a piezo actuator uh, with the fluid amplifier and the road surface sensors. Whenever the sensor senses a heavy bump or some, or some such, uh, some such uh, abstractions to the car movement, immediately the smart uh, shock absorber gets actuated in order to reduce the shock levels increasing the passenger comfort. Other area where we have the smart sensors in, uh, in, in, in automobile is in the micro positioning of the uh, 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 micro positioning. So, it basically it has a bimorph piezo. Uh, uh, piezo element which is actuated, which is electroded and which is actuated in order to get the necessary positions. So, there are various applications of smart uh, systems in automobiles. Of course, uh, uh, smart systems are extensively used in medical uh, field, especially in the area of uh, coming up with micro robotics for uh, surgery and surgical tools, micro surgical tools. There is a micro needles that are very famous and of course, uh, not to mention uh, there, there is the blood, blood pressure, uh, pressure sensors for blood pressure monitor and many such medical applications we need smart systems. In the area of civil, uh, civil engineering, we need smart systems for monitoring bridges. Many of the bridges are very old and uh, it has to be assessed for its structural integrity. So, we require structural health monitoring technique to be built uh, into the bridges of the current and the new bridges. And we also have to look at the integrity of the structure for uh, hazardous environments such as earthquake uh, and tsunami uh, type of uh, natural disasters. So, in the area of civil engineering, here is a, a view graph of the smart systems that is built in Japan, uh, in the Osaka, Japan. And uh, this is uh, this is called the Dova Kosai uh, Phoenix Tower, which is uh, about 29 floors. Uh, and uh, on the right hand side, one could see the instrumented smart system that is built in, in order to monitor the earthquakes, strong winds uh, and uh, any other hazardous uh, uh, harsh uh, loading conditions. So, typically the smart system has a, a tune mass damper system 
which has an adaptive mass damper in the adaptive mass damper the mass varies based on the situations and there is a tuned mass dampers which has basically uh, function is to uh, separate the natural frequency with the driving frequency of the wind. So, the major disaster will cause from what is known as the resonance when the frequency of the wind and the frequency of the structure coincide. So, the major uh, function of these damper system is to actually separate out the, uh, the natural frequencies of the structure with the, that of the loading that is coming either through the earthquakes or from the wind. So, this is a typical smart system that has been built in many of the major tall rise towers uh, uh, in civil engineering. As I said earlier, bridges is one area where smart sensors are used. There are two kinds of sensors that can be incorporated in bridges for constant monitoring of the strains or the loading on the structures which can be actually post processed to find out the health of the structure. The two types of sensors are on the left side we see the sensors are embedded in the bridge deck as shown here and these are basically piezo sensors which constantly uh, senses the strain in the structure and gives out uh, to uh, and the which can be post processed to actually find out the health of the structure. On the right we have another bridge which is instrumented with the fiber optic sensing and the fiber optics is very useful as opposed to uh, piezos. Uh, from the point of view that uh, it is uh, immune to electromagnetic uh, radiations and other such uh, uh, other such uh, uh, um, uh, forces. So, basically the strains here are acquired by the, uh, the fiber optic sensors through a data acquisition system which are transmitted to uh, through an RF devices. Uh, to a control room which will be far away. So, basically we can incorporate the wireless sensing methodology along with fiber optics very effectively and in fact one can actually monitor the bridges at a location far away from the bridge say typically up to a kilometer away. Uh, so, today we have uh, wireless sensors which have uh, a large range and a large data transfer uh, uh, capability. The other area where smart systems are extensively used in the is in the area of entertainment, uh, where uh, here there is a typically a ski board which is instrumented with uh, uh, smart sensors. So, the basically uh, if a person is using such a ski in order to ski, when the friction between the ski and the surface reduces to a level that the person is going to skid, then the smart actuation can be actuated in order to increase the skin friction. So, there are various such applications that one can think of using smart materials and systems. Coming back to in the area of uh, structural engineering, today composites laminated composites are extensively used because they are lightweight and high strength uh, uh, high strength and today the aerospace material is moving from the uh, aluminum to composite because of this uh, uh, features of the composite uh, the composite is basically made as plies and many plies are stuck together uh, to make a, a structural panel and each ply we have fibers which are oriented in a particular direction where the strength is desired and which are held together by matrix and these plies are uh, cued and then stuck together to make many plies so that you have a very lightweight high strength material structural material. The advantage of having like high strength light white is especially in structures like aerospace one can get enhance uh, fuel efficiency. This laminated construction will also have additional benefit that since it is a ply type construction we can embed the sensor at the time of manufacturing anywhere uh, in the desired location. Here is a typical uh, view graph where one can actually embed a piezo sensor and with the leads out and that can act like a permanent 
sensing element that we can build in into the structure. So, that the, the, the laminated composite structure in addition to carrying loads it can also act like a multi functional utility you uh, doing a host of other activities other than carrying load. So, here is a typical case of a, a smart composite with a built in piezoelectric film in the uh, uh, laminated composite structure. The composite when we talk about composites there are many variants of composites. Uh, the typical composites uh, the variants of composites are the active fiber composites which is which was typically made from MIT here. It is basically a uniaxially aligned uh, piezo, piezo, piezo ceramic fiber surrounded by polymer matrix. The, uh, and there is an IDT which is the interdigital electrode to deliver the electric field required to actuate the piezoelectric uh, uh, the film in the composite. So, basically it is used for a structural actuation and the typical configuration is shown here. There is also a macro fiber composite which is basically made from NASA Langley Research Center. Here a sheet of aligned rectangular piezoelectric fibers with IDT is put on a polyamide film. The difference is here it is a polymer film, it is a polyamide film and again it is used in structural actuation. A typical view of this is shown here. There is also M MFCX active composites which is made from unit uh, University of Michigan which is hollow in cross section. So, basically uh, the other two require high voltage to actually deliver the actuation by making the fibers hollow the typically the voltage levels can be reduced. The advantage with respect to all these bulk piezo composites are the fibers are protected by polymer matrix. It is easily conformable to a curved surface both bending moments and twisting torques can be given and it can give higher displacement that means higher control force can be generated for actuation. If there are few other applications of MFCs that is the multifunctional composites especially in the area of aerospace. For example, we require aerodynamic control. So, here this is uh, for doing the aer aerodynamic control we need to uh, change the flow across the aircraft when it is flying and this flow can be basically changed by actually having a flap which will basically actuate to deviate the flow from the uh, from the uh, wing section. And here is a, a typical active flap made from piezoelectric and its behavior is shown here. The, the other areas where we can actually use multifunctional composites especially in aircraft is in the area of noise control and also the rear turbulence control typically by actually having these many of these flaps and flap controls. The other major applications of the smart materials is in the area of automotive applications and uh, today in the European Union uh, there is an increased need for protection and prote uh, protection and the uh, automobile producer are asked to have a new active pedestrian protection system. One such system is now built into the, the bumper of the a automobile where there is a sensor which actually which, which is basically made of either fiber optics or the uh, piezo, uh, piezo, piezo based uh, sensor which basically senses the approaching pedestrian and substantially uh, uh, which is linked to a control system which will actuate to actually take the necessary steps for the automobile. So, this is a, a solution that has been adopted by the European Union. Uh, today to, to their automotive cars. And the next area is the noise control and here is a typical uh, an application uh, in the helicopters. The helicopter generates enormous amount of noise because of the rotor which is here and this rotor generates enormous amount of vibration noise which are transmitted to the cabin through what are called these four struts, the active struts. 
So, basically this stretch acts as a conduit of noise and vibration from the rotor onto the system and because of which the cabin becomes extremely noisy and vibration levels are very high. And the, the comfort of the people traveling is extremely jeopardized because of this. So, there are various solutions that has been made. One such solution is to do a path treatment. So, we treat the path of this strut by actually having a smart actuator so that the vibration and noise is taken away by these actuators away from the, uh, the fuselage or the cabin. So, here is one solution where that this is this shows a typical strut and we place a group of actuators here and these actuators are controlled through a control system. So, when the control system is triggered when the levels are high this actuates do uh, give, gives out a control uh, 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 a reverse control force which takes away the vibration away from the system. So, here is uh, this solution was implemented in the advanced light helicopter made from Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and this is a typical configuration of a smart uh, a, a, a rotor with strut. These, these are the four struts that are present in the uh, in the uh, in this uh, system and basically a bracket was mounted and this strut was added with a two proof mass in order to give greater acceleration to the uh, to the um, strut so that it counteracts the forces caused by the vibration actuator and the typical actuator used is a magnetostrictive actuator the, the schematic of this is shown here. It is a package actuator which can deliver up to up to 500 to 1000 newtons of force can be de deliver, generated with this uh, kind of an actuator. The actuator was loading loaded here with the bracket here and this is a strut and the experiments were performed in the laboratory and the load cell was mounted for the load measurements in order to find out the levels of the load coming here. And if you look at the and this is a theoretical model which was developed based on spectral finite element formulation. One could see that when the control gains are increased the, the right hand view is shows the three, three sets of curves. One with the original strut how does the vibration levels are changing one with the, the group actuator introduced. So, basically the vibration level shifts a little bit and once when the control system is triggered. One could see with the control gain of close to 17 practically all the modes which are causing heavy noise and vibration is suppressed. So, this is basically was done in a theoretical uh, framework and this was later checked with the experiments. So, in the experiments we could see the two levels of at the two locations location A and location B one could see that one could attain a, a noise level reduction of about 45 percent in one, one location and 40 percent in the other location. So, basically by doing the noise treatment using magnetostrictive actuators you can reduce the interior cabin noise to the level of 45 to 50 percent uh, in an helicopter which is a huge reduction. The other area where uh, we can actually use the control system uh, and control the many modes coming is in the is using the, the piezo fiber composites which I talked about earlier uh, to control the vibration levels in a, uh, in a structure. Here we, there is a typical a cantilever beam with the piezo fiber composite present here at the root. The reason why it is put in a root is because the stress levels are very high there and uh, second thing is it is subjected to a very short term burst which, uh, uh, which uh, triggers uh, many modes to participate in the motion. That is it is not a single mode problem vibration problem it is a multi mode vibration problem and it is necessary to control as many modes as possible for the. Uh, for, for the sake of the increasing the structural integrity of this structure. So, in this cantilever beam such as a, 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 a short burst mode of uh, as short as 50 microsecond was triggered and it uh, you could see that the blue lines here are the 
or the responses that are uh, uh, due to an actual uh, the due to, uh, due to the struct due to this uh, short term burst without the actuators. So, the moment the actuator is made active that is uh, a, a closed loop control was triggered using just a PID controller you could see that most of the modes are suppressed. So, this is one of the crucial thing that a smart actuator can do but for reducing the vibration levels. The other area where we could actually do is in the same structure we need to know where we should actually place our actuator, uh, where we should actually place our sensor because in most of the actuation and control the actuator will be triggered with the sensor uh, the, uh, with the sensor sense signal onto the controller. So, the position of the sensor for controlling the PID control is very crucial for the suppression of the uh, vibration levels. And here is a plot of the sensor location versus actuation location and what is plotted is the level of the response which is which is uh, quantified by this expression which is basically based on the outer plane displacement of the open loop and the outer plane displacement of the closed loop. So, we clearly see around this location is the best location for basically uh, placing the sensor for getting the maximum sensitivity for your actuation. Next we will see another case study where we can actually do an active vibration control in a thin walled beam. Thin walled beam are extensively used in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, aircraft construction because the prime objective is to reduce weight, uh, reduce weight of the structure for increasing fuel efficiency. The reduction of the uh, th skin thickness will cause secondary effects such as uh, the warping and the bending axial and bending torsion coupling. So, here what we are trying to see is the uh, and because by reducing the thickness of the members the mass reduces and the vibration levels can also increase. So, here what we have used is we have used PZT actuators to reduce the fundamental and the higher order vibration modes and the control design we have taken instead of PI we have actually used the Eigen structure assignment technique to actually see whether we can actually reduce the control. And the major objective here is to increase the damping level uh, by, uh, by increasing by doing so we can actually reduce the response. So, here is a case of a cantilever beam where the PZT actuators are mounted both on the top and the bottom surface of the beam. So, this is a side view. And uh, this is an experimental setup where there is a beam here where uh, and uh, the, the PZT is actuated using a signal generator which is connected to the an oscilloscope and the data acquisition system. So, the left, left side this is the, the response of the uh, beam, uh, the tip response of a beam due to uh, the obtained from experiments and the tip response of the beam obtained from finite element formulation. We will talk about finite element formulation a little later. So, we could see that both the, both the experimental and, and the theoretical predictions are very good and you could see close to about 40 to 50 percent reduction, uh, reduction in the response. Here the dark line is the uncontrolled response and the uh, uh, dotted line is a controlled response and the control was given through a simple sinusoidal input. So, we could see that the PZT actuators certainly are able to reduce the vibration levels in the structure. The previous plots are basically based on the in the time domain. Now, in order to look at the frequency domain because the, what we have given is a simple sinusoidal input triggered at certain frequency. So, the frequency response will also have a peak in the frequency where we triggered and that is clearly seen here. So, the basic objective here is by using the PZT actuator are we able to control see the reduction in response both in time and domain. In the previous curve we saw 
the there was a reduction in the uh, responses in the time domain and now we can see that in the frequency domain we see one predominant mode triggered at about 30 32 kilohertz and we could see that the frequency amplitude decreases with the uh, with the control and moreover we, uh, there is two curves here one based on only when you had one set of PCT actuators and one when you have two sets of PCT actuators. We see that having more set of PCT actuators the reduction levels is got from here to here and here even less. So, basically by using more PCT actuators we can generate enormous amount of control force which can reduce the vibration levels. And the right hand side here is when the when the input levels are very high. So, even with the input levels are very high, the vibration levels are very high because the input level is of higher magnitude, but still the control is very operational and the PZT actuators are able to do the control very well and this was correlated both from the theoretical studies and also the uh, experimental studies. The same example were triggered with a short burst pulse which is just about 50 microsecond duration here and this when you take the uh, the frequency response functions you could see that there it triggers many modes all these spectral peaks are corresponds to the modes that this short burst, uh, short burst uh, uh, pulse is uh, triggering. So, our objective here is it is not sufficient we control the first mode alone we need to control all these modes as possible that is the major idea. So, we actually introduced the control system and we calculated the damping levels and when we look at the damping levels the uncontrolled has a very small damping whereas by introducing a control from 0086 we have made 0344. And even though we targeted only two control two modes to control that is first and second we could get on the right hand side we could see we could get almost four modes to control. So, this is a very effective methodology that we have adopted the the control system along with the PZT is able to actually even uh, reduce suppress the vibration caused by the multi mode phenomena caused by the short burst uh, uh, force uh, short burst force. The next important uh, area what we are talking about is the structural health monitoring. Till now what we saw is most area were dwelling in the area of uh, vibration control, noise control, the flow control and those kind of applications. The structural health monitoring is basically uh, assessing the health of the structure. Uh, it is similar to a structural doctor I would call. So, what is structural health monitoring? It is a study involving the monitoring detection and arrest the growth of flaws such as cracks constitute what is universally termed as structural health monitoring or SHM for short. And the SHM has four levels first is just to say whether the structure has any damage or not. The next level is once you know there is a damage then what is the where is the where is the damage located what is its size extent and what is the orientation of the damage. And the level 3 is after determining the location of the damage you want to know how severe the damage is if the damage is going to grow or not or it is going to be stagnant. If it is goes it is going to be catastrophic it is going to actually lead to the failure of the structure. And the level 4 is how if there is a damage that is as potential to grow can we control the growth of crack the, 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 those crack or damage. So, these has 4 levels and each level is an order of uh, uh, magnitude complex than the others when we come from 1 to 4. And the SHM types can be offline or online. So, offline is once uh, a system like an aircraft can come down to the hangar and then we uh, do the SHM studies to find out the whether the damage is there. Online is as the aircraft is flying the at the onset of damage it has to be known to the people who are driving this uh, system that is the aircraft. So, SHM system basically has hardware and software the hardware components are basically the structures and the electronics and the software component is basically the signal processing and the identification. 
So, the hardware requirements are basically we need sensors, different kinds of sensors, smart sensors, actuators, data acquisitions, electronics and also trigger devices to actually trigger the required inputs. And the software requirements are basically the signal processing algorithms, the damage models we need to actually build based on mechanics and the damage detection algorithm based on various tools let, such as the mechanics based damage detection algorithms or the soft computing tools like the genetic algorithms or neural networks etcetera. So, a detection system can be passive or active. So, in the passive system you input a force whose magnitude and, uh, and the time profile you do not know and you, you find out you, uh, you measure the strains using conventional strain gauges and from based on those data you should find out where the damage is taking place. So, in short the in passive diagnosis system it is a limited information system you do not have plenty of information because it is a sensor only system. As opposed to this if you take an active diagnosis system the sensor which you are using can also actuate. So, basically you can trigger a predetermined input force whose profile you know and you have a uh, the same system can actually measure the output in the form of strains or velocities or actual uh, accelerations etcetera. And hence there is a plenty of information unlimited information that you can have uh, to actually uh, detect the damages. So, there are various material sensor materials that are there there is a piezo ceramic, terphenol, PVDF that is polyvinyl difluoride these are some of the materials that can be used to actually use as a sensor actuator combination materials. And the typical load we always use piezo load uh, piezoelectric actuators to trigger the load and uh, the operations we discussed in the lecture 2. The SHM is a vast area which requires a multidisciplinary technology understanding. So, it basically comprises of four major subdivisions where we need technologies understanding one is the condition based monitoring, we need new NDE technologies, we need new sensor technologies in order to get that and most important is new modeling techniques without modeling in order to find out where the, uh, the uh, crack or a damage is there becomes extremely difficult. So, typically we are looking at a typical system say for an aircraft, the aircraft will be basically instrumented with unlimited sensor network multiple sensor systems and these basically will actually uh, uh, acquire the data, analyze the data and the data is sent back to the control room through a data communication and this is analyzed using the NDE and the structural modeling tools and immediately the if there is any alarm that needs to be sounded it is sent back through an advanced communication system. And this is what we call the online health monitoring that is required which requires understanding of new NDE technologies, new modeling methods, the damage detection algorithms and advanced communication technologies in order to do that. And when come to offline health monitoring if you take a typical aircraft there are various activities that one has to do one is the inspection one is the re uh, repairing, one is the, uh, the other is the miscellaneous activities there are plenty of things. So, if you look at this the inspection amounts to about 40 percent of the total maintenance cost. So, and every time an aircraft flies after a certain number of hours they are retired to the hangar and uh, each part is removed and uh, it is put through thorough ND inspection to order to find out where the damage is. If we can reduce this by building the smart system in it and as and when and, and that takes just a fraction of few hours in order to assess it compared to many days that are currently being taken we can significantly reduce the offline health monitoring cost. And this is one of the goals of the health monitoring. So, if you build in the health monitoring system into the 
uh, health monitoring process into the system, we can significantly reduce the offline health monitoring cost. That means reduce maintenance cost, that means the reduced times means that much hour of reduction, reduced time is available for flying to many of the aircraft companies, which is very crucial today. So, there are various problems, major issue is lot of fuzziness in the health monitoring from the measured response and uh, the what is the type of modeling methods we need to use, what kind of damage detection algorithm we have to use because most of the uh, measured response is either noise polluted or incomplete and th th we have to detect based on these methods. And where do you have what type of sensors we have to use for this uh, uh, that has better sensitivity or actuation authority, where do we have to place the sensor, these are major issues that are uh, uh, involved in the structural health monitoring. So, here, here is some case studies and here basically we have actually used uh, a, uh, the magnetostrictive uh, sensor to actually uh, uh, detect the presence of damage that is the level 1 damage. So, basically what we do we have a magnetostrictive material uh, basically which is used like a horseshoe type magnet uh, horseshoe type magnet arrangement which is attached to the structure. So, one, one uh, leg of the uh, horseshoe magnet will act like a sensor other will leg as an actuator. So, when there is a change in stress the open circuit voltage across the sensor changes by measuring the change of the open circuit uh, voltage before and after the damage has taken place we can actually confirm the presence of damage. The, 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 the concept is uh, schematically shown here. So, this is a horseshoe type magnet that is attached to a laminated composite and one leg act like a sensor other leg acts like a actuator and the damage is present here. So, the presence of damage will alter the state of stress which will change the voltage. By measuring the voltage const constantly we could actually know whether the damage has taken place or not. And such a study was done both experimental and theoretical and the, exp and, uh, the experimental study is shown here, the horseshoe type magnet arrangement is shown here where the two coils are there, this is a 8 ply unidirectional laminate that is used and the signal is triggered. A current is passed, magnetostrictive material works on the principle of magnetic field which is created based on the current. So, the, this is passed here and we can actually amplify the voltage and uh, acquire the data. So, these are basically passed here, we could see uh, the current as a function of frequency and uh, amplitude and the, this is the experimental one, this is the theoretical one for a 2.4 centimeter delamination on a 20 centimeter on a long B, we could see that there is the, the sensing voltage is of the order of millivolts, which can be easily uh, captured and read from our devices and there is a good correlation between the experimental and theoretical. So, these are some of the things how this whole thing varies. The other one is we have used this uh, uh, the turbine blade, which is an essential component of an engine and we here the stresses because this will be rotating close to about 12,000 to 15,000 rpm and based on this the stress levels are going to be very high in this region and which is going to cause uh, a, a lot of uh, the, the damage is going to initiate somewhere in this region and uh, this is basically made from titanium and uh, here what we did is we mounted 4 piezo sensors, uh, 4 accelerometers in order to measure the accelerometers and the signal was triggered here and in order to find where the damage is. And we plotted what is called the damage force indicator as a method to actually do that. And when we do that, we could see that there is a uh, the, the, this value of the damage force exactly peaks in the location of the damage. And this damage is of 20, 25 micron size, not visible to naked eye. And this good modeling tool and very good uh, um, sensing capability of this sensor, we would be in a position to actually locate such small damages and the damage size is shown here, it is a very small uh, damage of the compressor blade. The other area where now it is rapidly going is in the area of uh, health monitoring, I mean using the non-contact sensing using the laser vibrometer where uh, we cut the complete wave field here 
and uh, this is a non contact measurement where you have a low frequency device which is triggered which is uh, amplified to a high frequency region and there is a laser beam that is thrown here when the when the structure vibrates it acquires the data the complete wave field and this has a plenty of opportunities for health monitoring. Here is a plate of four different damages and these four regions can be separately monitored using laser vibrometer which has different cuts. So, basically we will get the different amplitude of the damage index that we are going to plot here. So, here we have we could see that uh, uh, here we could see the wave front moving in each of this area captured by the laser vibrometer and we could see something like a, a completely mode conversion taking place indicating the presence of damage using this non contact sensing. And this is very useful because ideal for offline health monitoring if you have this laser device present in an aircraft hangar and it will be possible to monitor these small damages and this is the way now things are going for. So, there are various uh, uh, applications uh, on using laser vibrometer that we have done and these are some of the vertical tails that we have done the plates with multiple delaminations, this is the plate with the sheet metal where there is the hairline cracks are there, there is a delamination in composites and here is a case where we have also found out the manufacturing defects in terms of porosity that can be found using this laser vibrometer and this is a, a, a wing spar attachment which is very complex and the damage is here by triggering the signal we could be able to do that. And here is a practical case where the section was implemented on a real aircraft and using the, uh, the laser vibrometer uh, this we were able to find the place where the damage could have been there. So, in summary what we have seen is the range of applications that the smart systems can have and with the innovations uh, that one can come up the applications are endless. So, one can have a major major uh, new systems that uh, one can see that coming up in the in the years to come. The major features of such a smart system is it is interdisciplinary in area covering mechanics, electronics, fluidics, biology, magnetism, optics. The convergence of micro, nano and ICT and bio is a place where we can actually build in. The heterogeneity in terms of semiconductors, ceramic, glass and organic a multifunctionality sensing logic and memory and finally the integration basically it can be monolithic hybrid multi chip and large area so the 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 this is going to be endless so thank you very much we'll end this lecture here